Welcome back. We have a lot to cram in. How about this from Pitt Volleyball? Sold out. Yins did it. Tomorrow, the match with number one Louisville, the only one of two losses on Pitt's schedule for volleyball, uh, was responsible at the 26-0 Louisville Cardinal. Uh, so that's going to be at the Fieldhouse, and then tomorrow night, four hours later, uh, and I got to believe they're going to have a bigger crowd than maybe the Pitt basketball team will have. They take on Vanderbilt at 9 p.m. in a tip-off. Real quick, Andrew, I have a whole bunch of things to get to, but a uh, tweet here from Drew Kane who says, does it concern anyone that Philip Lindsay was not good enough to play for the two-win Houston Texans? Interesting dynamic there, and I think that's a good point. I don't know specifically why, but we already talked about that. I want to get your th thoughts about uh, James Franklin because here we are back in 2019. Penn State gave him a six-year extension, which still has four years to run, and all of a sudden here, there is a new 10-year, actually, extension. He's got 10 years. Why the need? Because everyone knows these contracts are not worth the paper they're written on. And if he wanted to get out of it, he exactly. could. Although I understand the buyouts are big and all that. But uh, is it just a show of what? Well, really, it comes down to, did Penn State want James Franklin to be their head coach in 2022? And if the answer is yes, they had to give him this deal. Why? If their answer was no. Why do they have to give him a deal? for USC or LSU. Why, though? for USC or LSU. He signed for four more years. Why, Why did they have to do anything? Because one of those schools would have paid the buyout and got him out of the deal because, to quote you, the contracts aren't worth the paper that they're printed on. Right, but my point so that's is what happened James here. Franklin this year and his record against yes. elite teams is not all that good. I had totally I don't understand you, and I admit he's you. a great recruiter. He is. He brings in talent. But then what you do with that talent, I can't believe, and especially in LSU's well, case, I wouldn't have, he, I would not have seen that happening. Maybe USC, and I don't think USC is the program he'd want to be at. I'd rather be at Penn State. I, I don't, I don't think Penn State gives him this deal unless they felt like he was ready to leave for one of those schools. I think they could have played a game with chicken with him and, and done exactly what you said. No, sorry, we're not going to do it. And he would have had to stay put with his current contract. But what's happened here is, number one, I think USC legitimately was going to hire him. And number two, another coach in his division with a much weaker resume just got the same exact deal. I mean, that's really the other issue here for Penn State is that Michigan State gave Mel Tucker the same contract, Bob. Yeah, so I, it's kind I, of a keeping up with the Joneses thing, to be honest with you. And I wouldn't be surprised if in the next few months, if, if believe it or not, even if he loses to Ohio State, I wouldn't be surprised if Jim Harbaugh and Ryan Day at Ohio State got similar <laughs> deals that even exceeded what James... I'm serious. I, I'm not, that's what I'm happens not surprised in college football. It. It's I, a rat I, race, Bob. I understand it. I, I just... It, it makes no sense to me to give these 10-year deals. I'll make you bet right now. He I mean, won't Pat Narduzzi got a contract extension after a 5-7 and seven and I, season. I didn't agree with that five either. 5-7. and seven. There was no... Yeah, there, but now it actually makes... It looks like it makes sense. Okay. Because no time, Pat Narduzzi, no Kenny Pickett. Yeah, no well, no Narduzzi, COVID, no let's Pickett. put this, no COVID, no Kenny Pickett. I don't know that he would have been back if he was, if the rules were a little different before COVID. So that helped out quite a bit. And it's good. They made the most of it. No question about it. All right, let's go to the lines. We got a lot of people running out of time. Uh, we'll begin with John in Banksville. John, how are you? Hi, guys. How you doing? Good. What's up? Good. Glad hey, I got John. through. You two are my, are my favorite pair on the show. We appreciate it. Uh, Thank you, John. A question and a comment. My comment is regarding Claypool. And people saying that he's not uh, playing up to par. I disagree with that because uh, I think it's more on bet. Either throws the ball three feet too short to him or ten feet over his head. So how do you expect him to catch it if that happens? I mean, the, great, the guy is great at drawing penalties, but he's not going to get those penalties called if the ball is not catchable. So that's what I think about that. And I just wonder, too, my question is, what do you guys think of the uh, top six this week for the playoffs? Well, I see Pitt's up to 17, and I like the fact that Cincinnati's in there. I, you know, Andrew, a lot of people don't agree with that. They think, you know, Michigan should be in there. What's, what's your take on that? And now Ohio State jumps Alabama, which I thought was the right call. Yeah, well, I think it's going to come down to this. You know, Ohio State or Michigan, they're going to knock each other out. Mm -hmm. One team will stay, one team will go based on that game this weekend. The same thing might be true if Georgia beats Alabama. By a big then margin. Then you'll have a two-loss Alabama team. Right. Yeah, but you know what, Bob? If Alabama doesn't beat Georgia, where are their great wins? 
I mean, they're uh, not going to If they have... play a tough game against Georgia, let's say it goes right down the very end and they're nose for nose with them, yep. I'm giving it to Alabama. I still like, and I think, when I say that, I think generally speaking, most people look at that program as the program that would get in from a marquee value over any anybody I else. Don't, I don't disagree with you on that, but I'll say it again. Who will they have beaten? Ole Miss will be their best win, which is a good win, a very good win. But it's not like a long, extensive resume. Uh, the SEC West, they will have beaten Auburn. They lost to Texas A&M. So, you can say the same about know, Cincinnati. They'll... With all due respect, they had a win against Notre Dame without Notre Dame's quarterback. I could look at their resume and say the same thing, even though they're undefeated. So. Well, I think, but here's the problem. If, if we just say we're going to take the best teams and who you beat and, who, and what your record is doesn't matter, then Alabama would just be in every year. They could go. They could lose three games, and we would no, pick them anyways I think three's because a little of how different. many five-star. Okay. I mean, this debate's going to go on and on every year just because it is, and it's probably good for the sport. They like it this way. But, you know, no clear cut. I, I agree with you. There's going to be some head knocking going on. If Michigan should beat Ohio State and do it fairly handily, Ohio State could be in trouble there. Anyway, let's squeeze in one more call before we go to a break, and that would be Jim in Shaler. Jim, what's up? Hi, Jim. Hey, guys. How you doing tonight? Mm, good. Thanks. Hey, hey. my, my uh, question is more for Pony, but you were on the show at the, at the time too, Bob. Earlier in the year, uh, Pony really was cutting down the Bengals. He was like, hey, they should be going off to the offensive line to protect Burrow. Hey, Cincinnati's having a great year this year, Pony. Um, with Joe Mixon, you were talking bad about Joe Mixon too. He has over 11, about close to 1,100 yards. Well, I don't think I was talking um, bad about yeah, Joe Mixon, yeah, the running and, and, back. And, um, in fact, the number one receiver. In fact, I've been on here before, and I've said that I thought they were a sleeper mm -hmm. in the AFC North. Uh, my issue with Mixon is completely off the field stuff, and I will cop to the. I, I thought that they should have taken a left tackle instead of taking Chase because they already had Tyler Boyd and and uh, and Higgins. Um, but you know what? They've got so many weapons now. As long as Burrow doesn't get killed, Bob, you know, it's a pick-your-poison offense for Cincinnati, and that's going to be the test for a Steelers defense that, yes, is getting healthy, but just gave up 500 yards and 41 points last week. Yeah. All right, we have more to talk about. We'll do it when we come back. You're watching the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call on a Thanksgiving week, and happy Thanksgiving to all of the viewers out there. We appreciate your patronage. We'll be right back.